Yeah, so I'm not coming from the gym today. That's great. Uh, tips and tricks of the trades, maybe, of the trade. Uh, I'm thinking about conversions and, and stuff like that because these Mercedes engines rarely end up in a Mercedes car or in a Mercedes car that didn't have this this engine from the beginning. So it, it really doesn't matter what car you have. If it's not like an old Ford Bronco or something, it might be difficult to do what I'm gonna explain, but yeah, we get that. Let's say you have like Mercedes SLK, you know, a normal petrol, uh, hard top cabriolet, I don't know what they call them. Yeah, it's fucking metal roof, but it's a cabriolet. So it doesn't matter. Mercedes SLK says like 230 compressor, perfect car, but you want a 605 in that car, right? Because that fucking four cylinder compressor, petrol engine is just bullshit. No, it's a really good, M M111 is a really good engine, but you want a 605. That's the topic of today, right? And you want to run that with a mechanical pump because it's easy and you get a lot of power. So how will you make your car work with the new engine? That's the question. Uh, first of all, I don't know if the M111 engine mounts fit the 605 block. So let's just assume they don't. You have a six speed manual in your car. And that bolts up to 605 in this case, because the SLK is too small for a 606. So, the engine will fit the gearbox. That means you can keep your prop shaft and everything else in your drive line, and the engine will be in the correct position in the car. That's good, but you need engine mounts, right? So, first of all, because the engine arms this is the fucking bullshit with English and Swedish. Engine arms and engine mounts is different fucking things. So your engine arms, because the engine mounts, the rubber fucking bullshit, that's in the car, right? So you need new arms from the engine. And first of all, you have to measure something that you can repeat, like the angle of the gearbox with the stock engine in place. So if you know the angle, this has to be on like a two post lift or hoist or what the fuck you call it. Something that's stationary and you can repeat. And you will not move your car, of course. You put it on the lift and it's there till you have the new engine in the car. So you measure the angle of the gearbox in the front of the gearbox to see what kind of tilt you have um, according to the fucking universe. And that angle you will write on a fucking piece of paper. So you remember it. So you don't have to remember it, of course. And then you put your 606 in. And it bolts up to the gearbox, really easy. And you adjust your height on your engine till the angle of your gearbox is the same as original. What we normally do is that we add like five millimeters because you will squeeze the engine mounts a little bit when you load them up with the engine's weight. So engine five millimeters higher than the angle you are aiming for and then you just build new arms. That's like the easy part of it all. So now your 605 is in your car. Everything is lined up, everything works as perfect. Yeah, except for your fucking gauges and, and uh, the instrument cluster and nothing works, right? But we're gonna make that work with your mechanical 605. It's so easy. I wrote on the I wrote this on the Super Turbo Diesel forum like seven years ago or something. And immediately Companies that don't know shit took that information and used that on their build and profited out of it because they can't use fucking Google. 
or brain. Uh, doesn't matter because this is so fucking stupidly logical. It's if you don't get it, you don't get it. Use your car's ECU. That's it. The ECU is hooked up to the car. Everything will work if the ECU has its input. So you connect your water temp and RPM and anything else you need. It will throw a lot of codes because you have no um, coils. You have no, you know, you, know, you don't have you don't have injectors, you don't have coils, and that's pretty much it, because you have everything else. You have your RPM signal and everything like that. But it will throw codes. But your local fucking ship tuner will delete those DTCs for you. And then everything will work as normal. Your RPM gauge will work, and your water temp will work, and everything will work, except your fucking anti-skid it's not this electronic stability control that will be a little bit upset probably the abs function will work with the electronic stability control but it can't let throttle off because your throttle is mechanical and your engine is a diesel, so it will just go forward. But that's like the, the minor issue. Everything else will work on your car and probably the traction control, stability, electronics, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck is called ESP, electronic stability control motherfucker, will work ABS wise. And that is enough to save you in a hazardous condition. If you just let your fucking throttle off when a car is requesting you to do that. And so I'm minus five on the fucking killing fly scale. But um, I'm improving. I'm going to go to minus four today. So that's like the big... Uh, trick of the trade use your original ECU in the car and hook everything up as normal if you need an RPM signal for something else like you have an off gear controller for your 722.6 then you just add another sensor it is really that easy and your uh, M111 will have um, 60 minus 2, maybe. I believe it will have a 60 minus 2 trigger. It doesn't matter. It has a trigger. And you just have the same fucking trigger. Because the <clears throat> dual mass replacement flywheels, because this is a short input shaft, 6 speed transmission, of course. So you have a short input shaft transmission and you need a dual mass flywheel or dual mass replacement flywheel so and those has the correct trigger on the back from the beginning so you don't even have to worry about that everything will work just as normal uh, anything else anything else than killing fucking flies uh, no I don't think so. Engine arms is really, really simple. But, you know, you don't have to do it with pieces of sheet metal because it's, it's actually quite hard to do it. And it takes a lot of space. And um, and it's ugly. You know, so you have three cons and no pros. Uh, if you make it out of tube, it will take up less space. You can go round things easier because you can make it, you know, it's a fucking tube with bends. So for me, that's the go-to solution with the arms because it's easier and it looks better. And it is probably stronger as well. 
I mean, what the fuck is strong? You can use 10 millimeter fucking pieces of steel, and of course, that's gonna be stronger. Doesn't matter. Uh, I think that's it for today. We have uh, almost 11 minutes, and only one fly that is taunting me, and that's an improvement, but that's because it's cold as fuck. Uh, now you know how to build your engine arms and put your engine in the correct position, and you also know how to get another car working with your mechanical diesel engine. Or fucking shit in the car working with your mechanical diesel engine. And, you know, stay tuned. I will uh, come up with some other bullshit for the next time. Ta-da!